Hello, Tristan. Hey, I'm here. How are you doing? I'm very good. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, welcome back to the Sunday sessions with uh, with me, uh, Emil Oreng, and Tristan Stevenson from from BlackRock in in London. And if, yeah, a, a legend by itself uh, and an order of the the curious books. And now, uh, where are you now in the country? Well, I'm in Cornwall. I mean, I live down in Cornwall in the southwest. Um, so this is my retreat away from the city. Um, not that I'd be going to the city right now anyway, because obviously all the bars are closed. <laughs> um, which okay. is why it's good to meet up with you on these Sundays, Emil, so we can um, keep our hand in in terms of making cocktails. Although you're still bartending, yes. aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Grand Hotel is still open. Uh, we we had a really good um, we had a good weekend now. Uh, so yeah, we're still open. We're still doing our thing. It's it's not kind of the same that we've been doing before, but but yeah, Sweden is not on lockdown. Uh, we're pretty close to it, but we're, but we're not. So we can still do do the things we we, we love to do, even though it's um, it's a big difference because the bar you can't uh, have bar guests at the same time. You need to mm. all all everything is table served. So yeah. Well, it's I think not... also because I've I've been to the Grand Hotel and I, I ran a, I did a shift there with you. Um, it's a massive bar, right? So I mean, it's huge. E even for a hotel bar, it's it's an enormous space, which is going to be, I think, probably to your benefit because it means you can spread people out quite easily. In fact, even when it's busy, people are pretty well spread out anyway, aren't they? Oh, hello, Emil. Hi, folks. Uh, we're just uh, trying to get Emil back on. Um, Tristan, if you just, just sort on with us, we'll have that all sorted as soon as he's back. It looks like he is back, folks. Sorry about that technical difficulty. Here he is. Sorry he's for back. that, guys. Hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't really know what happened. I think I went, uh, what do you call it, when it's... Uh, well, well. wall. Yes. Absent without that's, leave. That's the proper word, yeah. I yeah, thought I was going to have to do this whole thing on my own for a second then, I mean, which was uh, kind <laughs> of daunting. That would be a cool... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so no, but but we have uh, still the regulations that you need to have a lot of space, uh, like the social distancing, uh, but we already had that before, so it's not such a big difference for us. Uh, yeah, I think and... I think it's, it's smaller bars that are going to face a bigger problem because yeah. some of my favorite bars and i know you're the same you know they, you only get 20 people in there at the best of times um yeah. so once you start distancing people then you're down to like four or five you know yeah exactly um, yeah, yeah which is is going to make it really Im probably impossible for those places to reopen even when they're allowed to um yeah. which is going to be a challenge which is all the more reason to keep on doing things like this because it means that we are still engaging i mean from my personal point of view i'm engaging with macmira talking yeah. about the whiskey tasting making cocktails still being creative and you know whether it's a bartender who's listening to this or you know someone who's interested in whiskey a consumer yeah. then you know at least it's sort of keeping these ideas alive keeping those sort of creative thought processes um going and well apart from anything else i just get to taste whiskey on sunday which is great yeah, yeah, I feel I feel the same. Uh, even though the still the bar is still uh, active, it's kind of a different thing anyway. Uh, you still you you're working, but you're still like just waiting for everything to to calm down in in one way. So I think this is a great way to to meet, especially especially because the Sunday sessions it was the idea from the beginning was that we this was uh, doing guest shifts all over the world uh, on Sundays. And try to try to make that a thing. And now Sunday sessions will will continue after after Corona will not disappear for a long time. But I think the Sunday sessions will will never disappear uh, in not, not this time anyway. Cool. Well, long long may it continue. Um, but probably yeah. we're gonna you're gonna have to start making more whiskeys. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're gonna have but to go through the old ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're going round and round. We're doing Svensk Ek today. Uh, yeah. And uh, have you have you tried it before, right? I have, because you can see uh, this was a full bottle, and yeah. uh, it's not anymore. Um, well, good. So I've had a couple of glasses of it, and yep. I tasted it again earlier today um, because I wanted to make a drink with it, mm -hmm. and um, 
I don't know. It, it might be subliminal messaging with the packaging, but for me, there's quite a pronounced orange note on the aroma uh, of the whiskey. It's aromatic yeah. orange, 10% um, Swedish oak, right? Yeah, so the last 18 months when we do the maturing, it's 10% it's of, of the whiskey that is on Swedish oak. Right, so it's finished in Swedish oak, basically. Yeah, 10% of the whiskey, yeah, right, exactly. Okay. And we w probably want to do more, but we don't have that much Swedish oak at the moment. So we're still doing these small casks because the cask is really small. Uh, it's only about 30 liters. Right. Uh, so, so when we can be do bigger casks and do more cask, the ten percent will probably twenty percent or thirty percent. So, so this is the first. I think it's the first try of really doing this with the Swedish oak because it has a, it has a lot of different notes if you compare it to to both French oak or or bourbon or 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 sherry oak. It's a it's a completely different thing. Yeah, and is it a like specific variety of oak that's used or is it an, a same variety as you might find elsewhere but just grown in sweden therefore slightly exactly different? Yeah. yeah no exactly yeah so so it's, it's different though but it's it's the climate that changed this kind of oak and yeah. and makes it really i think it like it's more peppery than it has a more not a more herbal tone but a more peppery note to it i really like that you talk about uh, oranges and uh, because for me, it's like sea buckthorn and black pepper. Yeah, well, um, yeah, there you go, sea buckthorn. They're, they're orange as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <you know>. um, <laughs> if we go for the orange team. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, also, I think the use of the small casks, that's probably what's bringing out a little bit more spice from the wood. Um, and it just probably starts to shift it into like bourbon territory are the cask seasons before they're used are they are they virgin casks when it's put in there virgin yeah there you go so i mean well. it's likely to just transition it slightly towards that like vanillary bourbony kind of style right because it's yeah, small, yeah. new new barrels um, and obviously it will sort of impregnate the whiskey with quite a big a like maturation flavor mm -hmm. in that short period of time just because they're new and small barrels yeah no exactly i I've, i think that is i think that is spot on but if you compare this to to the other ones we tried i think this one stands out the most like flavor wise yeah oh, it's, re it's, it's a complete... re really good yeah it's really good but it's really something like because a lot of a lot of whiskeys all around the world, I would not talk down on anyone, but a lot of just just has a label and it says like it tastes something differently. We did something completely unique. And, and when you try it, it's like this is not so much different from anything else. But I think this is this is something completely different. I think it's more have the tones of a rye whiskey. Mm, yeah, like you say, the spice. Um, and that that barrel characteristic is what's going to send it in the in the right direction for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I get you. I get you with that 100. percent So, what are you mixing today? Well, I mean, it sort of plays to what we've just talked about. I, you know, I said orange, uh, and you've mentioned rye, and I wanted to do initially. I was going to do something like a boulevardier. Ah, um, oh, nice. So that being. Um, would normally be made with American whiskey, bourbon, um, or a rye, um, along with Campari and sweet vermouth, so very much like a Negroni. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I was like, eh, I don't know, Bouvardier, it's, it's, it's quite a strong drink. It's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea. And my tendency to kind of turn whiskey into highballs moved me more in the highball direction. So what <laughs> I ended up doing was taking the sweet vermouth out, which you could leave in, to be fair, but I don't know. I decided not to. I wanted to keep it simple, a minimal number of ingredients um and replace the sweet vermouth with soda so i've got a tiny little highball glass here like vintage cut, oh, crystal, nice. cut crystal highball there which is really pretty um a mixing beaker or tin uh with some ice in it um got a bottle of soda here obviously the whiskey and then um, some campari you could use really any um, sort of Amari type thing, though. Um, I mean, it would work with with Aperol or you know any of the other brands. It, what you're looking for is something that's orange and and bittersweet. So it's going to add mm -hmm. a little bit of sweetness. It's going to add a little bit of bitterness, and that bitterness is 
going to kind of meld in with the barrel characteristics that's in the spirit and kind yeah, of bring cool. them to the forefront a little bit. And then obviously the orange that I say is, is, is for me present within the whiskey as well. Then clearly the orange flavor of the, the Campari is going to bring some of that out too. So I, I've only got a little glass, so um, which is a recurring theme actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had that a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, so I'm going to do sort of relatively small measurements, but about 25 mil of uh, the Macmura. So if you have like a regular highball, it would be 50 mils. Uh, 35 or 50. Yeah, it depends okay. on how big the glass is. Probably 35. Um, yeah. And then I'm only putting a tiny bit of Campari. I mean, this is effectively, this is basically a classic whiskey highball. Whiskey and soda, um, but just modified slightly with that Campari. So we're probably talking about five to 10 mil. Let's call it seven mil. Um, so really only a lot. And it's going to affect the color. It's going to add that little bit of bitterness and that little orange note. I'll give that a stir. So if, if it was a full-size highball glass, yeah, I'd probably do something like 15 mil of, yeah. of Campari in there. Um, then I'll strain that out. The reason I wanted to stir that first, rather than just um, uh, just pour it straight into the glass, is that I don't trust this strainer one little bit. Um, <laughs> is that uh, I, I'm not going to serve it over ice. I wanted it just straight into this glass because there's no room for ice in this glass anyway. It's super thin crystal. Um, yep. Chill it beforehand, and then pour a little bit of soda on top. And what you've got is this lovely little aperitivo type thing that you can just drink super, super quickly, um, responsibly, obviously. Um, yeah, of course. And um, just something to be enjoyed, you know, maybe with some olives or some nuts or something like that. Maybe there's a um, typical Swedish food that, that you have with it instead. But um, it obviously, that some of the flavors given the Campari and the, the aperitivo nature of the drink, obviously Mediterranean yeah. food would go quite well with it. A little bit of clementine zest just spritzed on top like that for aroma. We'll drop that on top, and there you, there you have it. Um, super quaffable, delicate characteristics. You're getting cool. the Campari. You're getting that bit of sweet, but the whiskey's riding through it as well. It's still the predominant flavor in there. Nice. Looks great. It's also like... Uh, I really like when you do high balls because this is also a little bit like a high ball, but it's also like, could you say that it's a modern whiskey, um, what do you call it, spritz? Yeah. Yeah, but totally. But except the champagne. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I think it definitely falls under, it could fall under spritz category. Um, I mean, you know, if you think about something like an Aperol spritz, which would yeah. be Aperol white wine, and um and soda water we've just changed the white wine for the whiskey basically yeah um exactly and uh and it works well you know yeah it looks great and i had kind of the same idea today uh, i i think it's really good that we don't talk to each other before uh, <laughs> <laughs> it would be so fun if we did exactly the same cocktail but but but, but we didn't today uh, so today i'm going for also a small a really small and neat, neat class. I think that is great for this this style of drink. Also, not the biggest measurement ever. Uh, I'm 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 a huge whiskey fan, exactly like you. But but not that much. Run twenty mil. Um, and I love doing sodas or or yeah, really like sweet sodas. I'm a sweet tooth. Uh, and I had the opportunity now to 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 make my own sodas for for. Um, a big burger chain here in Sweden called Boston Burgers, which is also up from the north. Uh, so I had, I had the chance to do four different sodas, and I tried one of these together with with uh, Mark Mira Svensk Ek, and I thought it was absolutely astonishing. Uh, and and it's made. It's called. Look like this. You can see it, guys. Uh, so we made it for Boston Burgers. You can try the Boston Burgers. Uh, but it's, this is also something you can do at home when we don't have that much to do. Because 
making sodas is not the most advanced thing in the world. It's a little bit more advanced when you do it in a can and, and you, you do a full scale, like full size of it, and you do a lot of cans. But the thing with this is it's more like a pina colada, uh, the flavor wise, but we, we don't use that much. The creaminess, we took it away. So we just want the freshness of it. So it's made with pineapple, sea buckthorn, uh, a little bit of citric acid and, and sugar. So you can do like a syrup uh, and add to a soda streamer. And when you have a soda streamer, you can use like 20% of the soda streamer as a syrup and then just add water and stream it. And then you have your own soda. So you can do this easily at home. Uh, it doesn't sound that easy, but but it is. <laughs> it, it, it is. Uh, so, so I think like a little bit that you talked about with, with the clementine and, and the oranges, I felt kind of the same way. I want to go pretty peppery on this one too because I, I think it, it has that dry notes. So just going to add this soda. So it's sea buckthorn, pineapple, um, a little bit of coconut in it. Just a great soda to enjoy wherever. Tastes really good with, with Makmino Svensk Ek. Also look kind of good. Uh, great color. It is, yeah. And I love doing sodas. I, I, I have that as a like the the ten the last ten years I've been doing it all my bars to try to do something completely different. I wanted to try to do a Dr Pepper because that's my favorite soda, mm. but I never made it at all. Uh, I wasn't even close. Do you know what I, I was thinking? Um, it would have been too similar to yours, in fact. Um, San Pellegrino or a blood orange soda, mm. um, which I've had with whiskey before, and it works really well. And like I di didn't have any, couldn't get any in time. But I reckon it would mix really, really well with Svensk Ik Svensk um, yeah. as, a, as a mixer because you've got that sort of sweet, almost candied orange characteristic coming through. And it looks great as well because you serve it to someone, you're like, wow, what's that kind of you know bright red, fizzy looking drink? Yeah. Well, it's whiskey based. And that surprises people, you know, because they think it's going to be vodka or whatever, you know? Yeah. No, I think that is great because, like, when you're doing cocktails at home too, uh, exactly like you're talking about now when using when you when you find one flavor in in the spirit and when you just do highballs if you find one flavor just go with that yeah yeah and try to just emphasize it and, and get it even more on on the roll like now you wanted more oranges and a little bit of bitterness and you you when you try the, the whiskey for the first time you you find oranges and then you go for that and yeah. I found like I, I thought about sea buck four, and I was like, okay, we're doing like a really easy going highball with, with that tastes like a pina colada. So I I think it's great tips. Yeah, Do you have I, any more tips like when you're doing highballs at home now when you're a bit bored? Well, uh, I mean, hi, for me, highballs, you there's a few key principles to it. One is you need to have low, like good ice, plenty of ice, um, yeah. which isn't that difficult to make at home. Really, you just need to get decent ice cube molds and yeah you know whenever you think about it just make some and use one of the drawers in your freezer just to hold ice yeah. um just keep dumping ice in there so that when you need it you've got plenty because you can get through loads of ice when you're making cocktails yeah, yeah exactly um and then you're going to want a ready supply of soda i you know you mentioned soda streams they're a really good way of doing it because you can make super super fizzy sodas um which means that even when you you're adding it to whiskey or other modifiers and mixers mm -hmm. um you your drink remains fizzy um yeah whereas oh you know or you can use small bottles and, and just you know that, that are sort of disposable but obviously there's a bit more waste there um but what you don't want to try and avoid doing uh, which i've just used there actually was is like large bottles unless you're planning on getting through a lot of highballs in one go um, yeah, exactly. you know you're gonna empty the bottle because you know they have a half life these bottles you know they yeah they uh you know they lose half their fizz every kind of day or two and um yeah. until they have virtually nothing at all so so you know really fizzy and then um yeah appropriate glassware as well um yeah. besides that I, I mean you know the approach is really as you've just described it and that approach is quite common amongst all mixology really you take your base ingredient and you identify a flavor that you want to sort of celebrate and and um, bring to the front of your drink. And then yeah. you look at strategies to do that. And I, I chose orange, I used, you know, Campari, but I could have used an orange liqueur, you know, I could have come down a, you know, uh, 
you know, citrus, uh, like lemon and, and uh, orange liqueur with Cointreau or something like that route, yeah. um, shaking it up and, and st- strained it out like a sidecar type drink. Um, yeah, could have used an orange flavored soda. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, you know, could have even just been a, a Rob Roy type drink with it, with an orange. Yeah, garnish, exactly. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. um, it's that. And, and I think really the particular drink you choose should really hinge on what the sort of intended occasion for drinking this thing is, you know, mm. is this something you're going to drink late at night when watching a movie? Um, or is it something you're going to have before you eat your dinner or in the afternoon? Um, you know, is it for a person who you know likes a particular style of drink? And then you can pick the ingredients to to fit that occasion. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great tip. I think I think it's all about the mood and where you are. Uh, I think that is I think that is the standard. It's a great tip for everyone because that's how easy it is to to make cocktails and to make everyone happy. Sure. Um, yeah. To to make you a little bit more happy, uh, we we the Sunday sessions is also about giving something back, uh, and uh, when you are watching us, you can go into macmira.co.uk, uh, and you can use the promotion code BlackRock. So we give something back to you guys. So for every sold bottle, I think it's seven pounds for this bottle uh, that you give back, and you also get a discount, which is also great. So you get seven pounds discount and. Tristan and the guys at BlackRock get seven pounds. Yeah, it's great. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, that's the least we we can do. So uh, I think we're I think we're pretty done for today. Uh, I'll probably see you. Will uh, no, I will not probably see you next Sunday. I will see you next Sunday. <laughs> Which whiskey are we doing? Do you know? No, uh, I don't know just yet. Uh, but I think it's Brooks whiskey. I think it probably will be because. Is that yeah, the last I'm in charge. One? Yeah, we don't have many left <laughs> to go, I don't think. No, I think well, I think it's Brooks whiskey next time. And after that, we're probably gonna do the gin. Oh, the gin, cool. We'll see. Yeah. We'll yeah. see. But but next time it's gonna be Brooks whiskey. Um so cool. let's keep in touch during the week. Yeah. Talk to you All soon. Right. So everyone, bye-bye. Thanks, bye-bye.